Previously, I'm Blister. This is Polybius. What do I feel like I'm getting set up? Just get a grip. I don't care. You're, you're talking to yourself again. Polybius was a video game with a limited release back in the early 80s, but it was no regular video game. There are larger forces at work here, Mr. Sindelar. So it begins. My initial contact with Deep Trench set me off in search of something called the Manga House. As it turns out, Manga House is a store at the Irvine Spectrum in California. Something tells me I'm close. Something tells me this place is important. Something tells me I need a shower. Nothing suspicious here. Just a bunch of interesting artwork. Uh, can I help you? Have you ever heard of a video game called Polybius? Sounds familiar. Why? Anything suspicious about Spy Hunter 2 or Kill Switch? <sighs> Man, I don't know. Maybe I'm just stretching here. But I'm even thinking games like Futurama, Whiplash, and Command and Conquer General Zero Hour connected to the Polybius. Can I let you in on a little secret? I just read some top secret documents that said Polybius was developed during World War II in the fight in the land of the rising sun. Starting with the invasion of the beaches at Normandy and Allied Assault, EA has made big cinematic action openings for the Medal of Honor series, It's Calling Card. Medal of Honor Frontline laid siege to the French coastline, but with a new angle on the attack. And not long after that, the Allied Assault expansion pack Spearhead gave the Normandy invasion a twist by dropping in from the sky as a paratrooper. Up to this point, all the MOH games have taken place in the European theater of war. Until now. Medal of Honor Rising Sun refocuses and recalibrates the action into the South Pacific for a fresh perspective on the other half of World War II. Sticking with the narrative storyline, Rising Sun engages the Japanese Imperial Army in the form of Joe Griffin. In the game, you take the role of uh, Corporal Joseph Griffin and the young Marine Corporal who's stationed aboard the USS California uh, when Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor happens. And you're thrust into the war from that point on. Joe's wartime adventures will have him traveling from Pearl Harbor to the grass-covered landscapes of Guadalcanal to the jungles of Burma and the Philippines all the way to Bataan. We have an intertwined storyline with the sequel to Rising Sun, which will be out the following year, in which case she'll play Donald Griffin. So you'll see the other side of the story with a parallel timeline. It may be unlikely that any one Marine went to all the places traveled in Rising Sun, but in terms of combat, EA has stayed true to its roots when it comes to realism. We go to great lengths in terms of working with, uh, say, Captain Dale Dye, who's our military consultant, uh, Dan King, who's you know a Japanese side technical advisor, making sure that we use the right weapons in the right places, the battles happen at the right time. You know? The core gameplay of the Medal of Honor games has been the run-and-gun combat mixed in with some disguise and stealth elements and a little rail shooting. But new terrain calls for new approaches, 10 missions worth. Some of the new things that we're really proud of, though, we've uh, taken it from a fairly linear game. We've added a lot of multiple paths. We've added a lot of replayability in terms of their secret items that you can find. So we have standard objectives. We've actually got bonus objectives that you aren't given. You don't know that they exist until you complete something. Rising Sun is also loaded up with new weapons, usefully interactive environments, and an AI tailor-made to take the bonsai mentality of the Japanese soldier into account. Uh, all three of the versions that will have three core game modes. You know, we've got our single-player game. We've actually implemented a co-op multiplayer modes where you play through the entire single-player experience, except we've customized it for cooperative play. In addition, on the PS2, we're going to be going to online, so you'll be able to play 
Uh, up to eight players online, got 10 maps. Not everything is completely new, however. Audio has always been a mainstay of the MOH games, and Rising Sun is no different. Environmental sound and combat effects keep the tension high, and the big orchestral score performed by the Hollywood Symphony gives the game an epic feel. Medal of Honor, Rising Sun, let's take that hill. You know, people say the first UFO didn't crash in Waswell, New Mexico in 1947, but that it actually crashed in Osaka, Japan in 1945, and that the U.S. government had brought them here. <laughs> Maybe the previous technology was reverse engineered from there. No way. Way. You know who could help us out with this? A spy hunter. What does a covert missions operative need to solve the mysteries of the world? You got it, a sweet ride. And the G6155 Interceptor is arguably the world's coolest car, not named Kit, Herbie, or Batmobile. But the Interceptor is so much more than a car. It's a boat, a snowmobile, and most importantly, it's a spy hunter too. Well, Nostra, the, uh, the terrorist organization is back, and uh, they are uh, trying to create uh, a global catastrophe so they can take over the, the large nations of the world. What they're trying to do is, is they're trying to melt the polar ice caps. So you kind of uncover the story uh, throughout the game and you're trying to stop that from happening. The only chance you'll have to stop the evil terrorists is to push the interceptor to its limits. Luckily, your driving capabilities are sky high. Spy Hunter 2 was developed by Angel Studios, which brought a smuggler's run in the Midnight Club series. So expect top level handling and a whole lot of speed. But the driving in Spy Hunter is always more than meets the eye. It's in the transforming. When you drive from surface to surface, your vehicle automatically morphs from a car to a boat, to a snowmobile, to a motocross bike, to a jet ski. And it also makes Julianne fries out of the baddies. We, we've added uh, west weapon customizations this time where you can, as you progress through the game, you get weapon upgrades. And before a mission, you can actually choose which weapons to put where on the car. Defensive weapons also take an upgrade. The fully rendered rear view mirror lets you drop your oil slicks and sticky bombs with precision, eliminating those annoying hanger honors that will chase you through the varied and expansive levels. So there's, there's four different environments. There's Asia, there's uh, New Orleans, there's the uh, Swiss Alps, and Russia. And every one of those regions has four missions and every region has a boss battle, which is something new to Spy Hunter. That's right, boss battles. And they come in the form of super vehicles, like the train. If you can't handle the bosses alone, Spy Hunter 2 features a multiplayer action, including a two-player co-op mode, or face off against your friends in the versus arena battles. All this innovation, but Spy Hunter doesn't forget where the Interceptor comes from, the weapons van. There's actually going to be rail sequences where you'll get in the, the weapons van and control a turret on top for a while while the car is getting repaired, and then you uh, take off down the road. If this isn't enough Spy Hunter news for you, get this. A big screen adaptation starring The Rock will hit the theaters summer 2005. So keep your calendars open, and in the meantime, keep transforming. Top secret missions and transforming cars. This mission's going to be a lot harder than I thought. Wait a minute. Manga has a lot of stories about psychic abilities. Of course, that's it, psychic powers, that's the connection. I wonder if Futurama and Killswitch can help me. Mm, the future and the answers are in here, somewhere. G4 TV for gamers and Tech TV are connecting to form G4 Tech TV. Coming May 28th, stay connected. For more information, go to g4techtv.com. Euphoria, the award show for gamers, is starting soon. You know, a lot of people think that manga is blood and gore and big breasts and violent settings and stuff, but it's not. You know, it's people sitting around, doing homework, hanging out in the office, building relations. Shit. Dude, what are you doing? Somebody is following me. I should have known. I read something about the biomechanically engineered soldiers tied to the Polybius. Oh, that might have been one of them. Is he still out there? Nah. I think he flew away <gasps> with the Tooth Fairy <gasps> and Santa Claus. <gasps> My only way of stopping them is they hit their kill switch. <sighs> the rules of the game are going to change. 
All you know is this. You are a bioengineered soldier who spontaneously regenerates his health. You have an arsenal of automatic weapons and a keen sense of taking cover when faced with enemy fire. And you keep having flashbacks. Who are you? Are you Jason Bourne from Bourne Identity? Are you Leonard Shelby from Memento? Or are you Sister Mary Clarence from Sister Act 2 back in the habit? That's all I wanted to hear. You'll have to play Kill Switch to find out. To play Kill Switch is to learn to survive a fierce reality-based third-person shooter and to learn to duck and cover. It's not your standard run and gun. You're going to be thinking about how you're going to use your environment, how you're going to move from cover point to cover point, how you're going to outthink your enemy. And because they're thinking too, they're going to try to be thinking, how are they going to flank you? How are they going to get you out of that cover point um, or into the open? The cover system is based on your ability to grab objects in the environment and use them as cover. Buses, boxes, and piles of wood, they all work. And while you're taking cover, stick out your gun and shoot blindly. You can lay a cover of lead over an area without exposing yourself to enemy fire. But don't go thinking you're invincible, Mr. Smarty Pants, because these enemies didn't eat stupidos for breakfast either. The enemy AI keeps them in deep cover too. You're going to realistic, real-world environments. You'll be in hot spots of today's military uh, and political hot spots. Uh, places like the Middle East and uh, the North Korea areas and, and the Caspian Sea. In like the Middle East, uh, you'll be in the city streets, uh, infiltrating different buildings and, and such, and uh, you know, accomplishing different objectives. We have an oil rig. Each of the, the levels will have a, a really good ramping up of, of getting into a place uh, achieving your objective and getting out, and getting out is, is really where all hell breaks loose. And nobody knows how to equip themselves for Armageddon like a biogenetically engineered soldier of fortune. We have about uh, 10 plus different weapons, and they're all real, real world weapons that we're basing off. So, you know, we have the M4 with a 203 grenade launcher, the, uh, the saw, the M249, uh, uh, different sniper rifle, um, a shotgun, that, that sort of thing. So all, all the, the, the very realistic, real-world weapons, modern-day weapons. In addition to these pistols, you're packing a healthy assortment of grenades, including sticky grenades, flashbangs, and fry grenades. Let them fly. The mystery may lie in your identity, but the conspiracy lies in the kill switch. Oh, it looks like he's gone. Man, I can't believe that I got government killer agents after me. I wish there was some way I could look into the future. I wish there was some sort of Futurama device that could just distort the time-space continuum. <sighs> this is the end of the world as we know it. Futurama may be gone from network television, but in the world of video games, a world we're somewhat familiar with, Futurama will never die. That's because the fine folks at Vivendi Universal have heeded the call of the fans of the cult animated hit. At the risk of editorializing, this reporter applauds the demise of the pathetic human species. <laughs> yes, Futurama. The cartoon that wasn't The Simpsons, but never wanted to be. It strived for something different. Like me. Different. <laughs> also, why are you wearing that funky hat? Plot. Professor Farnsworth sells the Planet Express to that Steinbrennian businesswoman, Mom. Obviously, this leads to Mom taking over 50% of the world. Ah, uh, that's cute. Making her the head honcho, Big Cheese, El Ruler Supremo. And with the help of her death bot troopers, Mom plans to enslave humanity. Okay, okay. In hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have sold her Planet Express. The mission is simple. Go back in time to stop this event from taking place. Yes, a trip into the time-space continuum. There are four characters you can play as in Futurama. Fry, the pizza delivery guy from the past. Leela, a one-eyed sex pot who takes no crap. Bender, the robot who's all about crap. And last, but also last, the intrepid and ever so gallant Dr. Zoidberg. Each one has their own unique fighting style and specific weapons. And then there's Dr. Zoidberg. Not a pretty sight, but then again, neither is Zoidberg. The gameplay isn't gonna knock you on your Farnsworth. It's a puzzle jumper, or as those in the early 21st century called it, a platformer. Fry will specialize, although that may be too strong a word for the dim-witted Fry, in guns, and his action takes place around old and new New York. Leela does that Lara Croft thing, depending on hand-to-hand -hand combat to get her through the Sun Planet level. And Bender? Well, Bender spins around delivering more robotic moves than a whole season of Soul Train circa 1981. And Dr. Zoidberg? Well, what words can be used for Dr. Zoidberg? Hmm, that was odd. Mighty odd. 
All the actors from the television show have lent their talents to the game. That includes Katie Seagal and the voice acting name of names, Billy West. I can burp the alphabet. A, B, B, D. No, wait. Futurama the Game was also written by the Emmy Award-winning writers of the show. Yes, that includes Matt Groening. He's kind of a big name in the world of animation, just in case you didn't know. As a matter of fact, or fiction, the game plays out exactly like the lost episode of Futurama. And judging by the ratings, a lot of the episodes may seem lost. But if you were one of those angry viewers who wrote letters or signed petitions, or like me, crawled up in fetal position and cried for more Futurama, cry no more. Futurama lives. So what was death like, Fry? Well, first, everything went dark. Then this bright light appeared, and it said, Game over. I've seen the future, and it's very bizarre. I don't know what to make of it. In my research of Polybius, I've noticed something called Whiplash, and something else called Command and Conquer Generals, Zero Hour. It's all very, very confusing. Note to self. Get no deodorant. Fast. G4, TV for Gamers, and Tech TV are connecting to form the only network taking digital entertainment to the next level. Sound fun? I love video games. Plugged in to every aspect of games, gear, gadgets, and gigabytes. That was unexpected, right? Okay. You're uh, watching G4 Tech TV. G4 Tech TV. Stay connected. Tune in for a sneak peek of Tech TV all week at 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. For more information, go to g4techtv.com. Hey, man, do you think that I can look in your storage area? If I don't find a smoking gun in this mystery, it's a dead end. Yeah, sure. Thanks. I am so glad that you are here. I don't know what I'm doing. We can't talk here. What? Will you please help me out here? You can't stop now, Bill. You're close. You've never been closer. Nothing's worth dying over. If you give him now, he wins, and he'll continue its plans for global domination. Who wins? What plan? All this is giving me whiplash. Top secret medical experiments gone awry? A crazy weasel named Spanx chained to an uptight rabbit named Redman? Dogs and cats living together? Will the conspiracies ever end? I'm getting whiplash from all of this. Spanx and Redman are escaping from the facilities of Genron, a high-tech uh, sort of animal testing product manufacturing facility. As such, they've each sort of been subject to testing within the facility. Spanx specifically has been the, the victim of electricity testing. Redmond's specialty was hair and makeup. Um, more specifically, the Dura Spray hairspray was a product that Genron was trying to perfect on, on him and, and found a particularly strong batch. So, so his natural affinity is he's impervious to pretty much anything. And in creating the duo, one of the things we wanted to do was uh, get away from sort of a saccharine, sweet, cutesy, Disney-type feel. Um, we were inspired by things like Ren and Stimpy. True to their tweaked dispositions, the dynamic duo do their best at destroying the labs and scientists of the Genron Corporation. Geez, I hope they can get my 401k money back. In fact, destroying just about everything you see would be in the best interest of imprisoned animals everywhere, especially since there's a tracker that lets you know how much money you're costing the evil empire. The game definitely has combat as a focus. Um, we wanted to make sure we had an interaction set that was different than just platform jumping, so there's, there's plenty of environment navigation in the game, but we wanted combat to be a big part of the game. Um, but at the same time, we wanted to to create combat that, that wasn't brainless button mashing. Combining the powers of the team is as easy as chewing up Hyber Snacks and attributing the powers to either Redman or Spanx. Boosting up Redman, the indestructible rabbit, means he'll do more damage. Give the juice to Spanx, and the health capacity for the duo goes up. There's also a reward system for stringing together combos of combat and destruction. This pretty much results in the Hyper Bunny madness. And when Redman and Spanx need that extra backup, it will come in the form of other animals released during their outburst. Weasels, rabbits, monkeys, whiplash. 
You know the Japanese have a saying for this. Oh yeah? What's that? I don't know. You're the one that works at the manga house. What's your point? My point is this. I think this is a test. It's my true hero's calling. I'm about to cross the threshold. We're getting to the zero hour. I've got to get moving. What was that? Tension's on. The conspiracy is never ending. Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? And who is the true enemy of freedom? The Soviets and psychic scientists from the Command and Conquer of old were replaced by the Global Liberation Army for Command and Conquer Generals. The expansion to CNC Generals called Zero Hour once again teams up the good old US of A with Mother China to defeat the terrorist threat. No cost is too great. From visuals to sound, Zero Hour maintains the same slickness and presentation as Generals. Texture, lighting, and visual effects are realistic and pretty, and the sound delivers the same sense of urgency and impact. The game is separated into single player and multiplayer, with the single player mode being subdivided into campaigns, skirmishes, and general challenges. Each army is mounted for five missions, and they all play on new maps with several new and modified units. They're attacking our base. China, the new campaign showcased the latest units, such as the U.S.'s microwave tank, which disables buildings and cooks troops. The Chinese Helix helicopter adds some death from above in the form of napalm and gunfire, and the GLA have a new sneak attack. There are a bevy of other weapons and upgrades available as well, such as saboteurs, combat cycles, carpet bombs, satellite hacks, chemical suits, and sentry drone guns, among plenty of other deadly options. General Dow versus... General Town. A new feature is the General's Challenge, which is basically set up as a dirty fight in the alley. After you've been called out, you must figure out how to use your army to its strategic strengths. There are three generals for each army, and each specializes in a particular aspect of war. For example, General Kwai is big on tanks, while General Granger commands the skies with air power. After the initial selections, you build up your defenses and let the fighting begin. Good bad or ugly. In the New World Order, you never know who the true evil doers are, and it's only during the zero hour that men are made into heroes. No! No, you can't die! I don't have all the answers! Take this. What is this? Microfilm? Don't let it fall into the wrong hands. What? Help me, Bill Sindelar. You're my only hope. No. What am I supposed to do with this? I've got to see what's on this film. Maybe the answers are at g4tv.com slash blister. <sighs> Don't sweat it. I'll find a way. Or I'll duck down or I'll just fly out using my matrix powers. <laughs> Would you trust food of language that you can't understand or read? Can you see the script in the thing? Yeah. Get it out. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> she always Bill. <laughs> But then we've got the almond-crusted sticks, which are really good with chocolate. 